opportunity to uh, give me the opportunity to present a summary of our review about the muscle quality and the new assessment index that we tried to figure out about the muscle quality. So what we are interested in about the muscle quality first is known that during aging, lean body mass, muscle mass, or fat free mass, it is increasing and mostly around the age of 60. Uh, according to this phenomenon, it has been originally defined that sarcopenia is age-related loss in muscle mass. And in the society, according to the Jensen data in 2002, we are thinking that around half of the population after the age of 50 are sarcopenic type 1, so free sarcopenic for those others that determine this name, or type 2 sarcopenic. Some causes are very common about the muscle quality and sarcopenia. First, the lack of the low level of physical activity could lead to sarcopenia. The protein intake or the type of protein intake, the increase of inflammatory cytokine, the increase of oxidative stress, and of course, aging. But the most important look at different, the gender is the sex hormone. In addition, why we are interested about the muscle quality is because it has been shown in 2002 by Jensen that more you are sarcopenic, more you are physical incapacity. Like here we could observe that the type 2 sarcopenic have significant uh, more difficulty to walk one quarter of a mile or to lift, carry uh, 10 pounds or to stand up from a chair. Even if you are a male or woman, you observe the same. But in, in women, you could observe that since you reach the level one, you have this kind of difficulty. But this has been also observed by Melton, who observed in 2002 that sarcopenic people have two times more and three times more relative risk to have a force or physical incapacity compared to non sarcopenic people. And Bouchard in 2009 confirms that this is also true and mostly and more important in sarcopenic obese people in men and women. But the point is that even if it's known that when you combine sarcopenia and obesity, you have a higher risk of mortality, Jensen highlighted us that in 2006 that we need to be careful about our conclusion when you are regarding the data because <coughs> it has shown that cross-sectional analysis uh, show more uh, relationship between severe sarcopenia and disability than longitudinal analysis. So at this time, we are uh, focused on, on the fact that we need maybe to be careful about the fact that we need to divide muscle mass and strength. And here, from uh, the Lovetani in 2003, sorry, we observed that the decrease of end group strength is maybe more important than the muscle mass around the age of 60. So, because of this uh, highlighting about the, the importance of muscle strength, is now regularly defined that sarcopenia is the loss of muscle mass and strength, so that we are also calling muscle function. However, since a few years, some data are showing that, lean, uh, that muscle strength and muscle mass are not completely related depending on the data. For example, then when you come in 2009, you observe that independently of the weight that you are losing, or if you are stable, you are not losing so much mass, but your muscle strength is decreasing independently of the weight that you are losing. So when you are regarding all the data, you note that muscle mass explains between 4 to 61% of the muscle strength change in aging. So in 2010, Manning and Clark proposed to divide the muscle mass for sarcopenia and to divide the muscle strength growth for dinapenia. So in our group, we have figure out, so now we have a new uh, name for the loss of muscle strength. We need to be a figure out what's happening with that. So we try to find different criteria according to what we are doing with the, dinap with the sarcopenia before. So we are taking 20 years in young women. We are looking now for men. And we are figuring out what kind of criteria we could take. So for the absolute or for the relative, because when you are regarding the data before they are studying the muscle strength, it has been shown that independently of the unit that you are using, you are not concluding the same relationship with the physical incapacity. But Manini and Club also uh, show what kind of causes could lead to dinapenia. 
And they focus on the fact that sarcopenia would, could be linked to dilapenia, but also the protein intake that we could observe here. And we, uh, we show that the protein intake in gram per day per body weight is significantly different in our group independently of your non dilapenic dynamic type 1 or dynamic type 2. And this is true when you are expressing the dynamic according to the angle strength in kilo per body weight or angle strength in kilo per lean body mass. And this is important because uh, Shokatea in 2010 uh, showed that less you are uh, mass strength and more you are disability, independently of the units that they use to express or to uh, relative the mass strength. And this is, uh, has been also confirmed by Woods in 2011 who observed that when we are regarding the muscle mass uh, between good physical function group and poor physical function group, we observe no significant difference. But when we observe the same um, difference according to the muscle strength, we observe a significant difference for poor physical function group compared to the good physical function group. So this is, again, showing that maybe muscle strength should be more important for functional capacity than muscle mass. In addition, in our group, we show uh, at the end of uh, 2010, so published now in 2011, that dynapenic people have a lower, a significant lower VO2 max and significant lower FEV1 than non dynapenic people. But in the same code, when we are dividing according to the sarcopenia criteria, uh, from the Jensen, we observe no significant difference in our uh, between three groups. This has been also observed, I would say, be, uh, from Stanford in 2009, who observes that more uh, when you are low strength and obesity, you have a higher risk of loss of mobility. And this has been confirmed from Bouchard and Jensen in 2002, who observes that dynamic obese have a lower working speed than non dynamic and non obese and this is true for men and for women. However, when we are talking about muscle quality, we need also to think about the third concept of muscle quality, who is muscle power. And muscle power is the ability to perform muscular work per unit of time. So when we are regarding the Lovetani AR data, we observe that, so as I shown before, the angle is is decreasing, the muscle mass is decreasing, but the muscle power seems to decrease uh, mostly and uh, more quickly in age than the other uh, components. And in addition, BNR in 2002 confirms the, the prediction that maybe power is maybe more important than strength uh, in uh, incapacity because they show that there are different, significant different in uh, each compound of physical incapacity when you're comparing leg strength to leg power. So in our uh, group and uh, our uh, and this uh, review, sorry, we are proposing that muscle power need to be the first component that we are thinking when we are talking about prevention of physical incapacity and after that muscle strength and after the muscle mass. So because of the mismatch between muscle mass, muscle strength and, and uh, muscle power, uh, suggest a deterioration of the muscle quality, which represents the age associated decreased ability of muscle to adapt to its environment. So it's important also to confirm that muscle quality attribute or property independently of the quantity. And in our area or in our paper, we focus on the fact that muscle quality in our geriatric field is a maintenance of functional autonomy. It uh, approximately uh, uh, accepts that the first definition of muscle quality must be given is the muscle strength divided by muscle mass. So according to that, Prostoria observes that when we are uh, looking about the change after three years of uh, following of uh, aging people, we observe a small decrease of lean, lean mass, but we observe a huge, increase, a huge decrease of muscle strength which lead to a decrease of the quality. But what we have figured out in our group is it's true that there are a, a positive correlation between muscle mass and muscle strength, but when you are looking at the muscle mass according to the muscle quality, we observe a negative, co positive, negative correlation, and this is true for normal weight, overweight, or obese uh, people. 
So what we are thinking is maybe to propose another definition of muscle quality, or maybe to be more precise about it, and we, we are thinking that maybe we could define muscle quality according to muscle power divided by muscle mass. So what are the factors we could influence the muscle quality? So the low level of physical activity, the obesity, the sex hormone level, the gender, and of course the aging. <coughs> but how to assess muscle quality when you are in geriatric population and in clinical, and in clinical way? Of course, we have a very good gold standard like a DXA or CT scan or MRI we could figure out what you are in muscle mass. But we are thinking that maybe we could use a BIA, even if it's not so accurate, but according to the Jensen equation, it's, it's showing a very good correlation with the DXA in our laboratory. In addition, we are thinking that for the muscle strength, it's uh, good to use an angle, it's easier, it's useful, and it's cheaper, so it's, it's better for everyone to use it compared to the kinkum because we need to think about what kind of protocol you could use, isometric, concentric, excentric, and which kind of degree, 30, 60, 90, etc. Or also with this kind of uh, equipment, we are using the one repetition maximum, which are expensive and not always available in each center or each clinical. And for the muscle power, uh, it's known that there are different protocols that we validate to, um, to measure the the power like the Wiggy test, or the King Kong, or the Bosco test. But uh, we, are, <clears throat> we are thinking that maybe the Taika protocol, which are using the chair student test, and this uh, protocol are asking to people to repeat 10 times as fast as possible the chair stand test. And uh, this uh, new equation is showing a very good correlation, I would say, with the muscle mass uh, measured by cross-sectional area. So, why to assess this kind of proposal? First, it has been suggested that muscle quality could influence functional capacity. However, because of the small number of studies, there is no clear evidence at this time, and muscle quality is not all well, well defined or characterized. So, at this time, there is no clinical standardized protocol to assess muscle quality in elderly. In regard to this result, a definition of muscle quality related to functional capacity is needed. So what we are proposing today uh, as a first step is maybe to have two steps in our diagnosis. First, we are measuring um, the quality in regard to the end grip, so end grip strength divided by muscle mass, and independently of the scores that obtain your uh, your subject, you have a second step or not. So if your uh, subject is in the poor category, so under the, the two standard, standard deviation, we classify him with a poor muscle quality. But if you are in the other category, we suggest you to use a muscle power a protocol using the Takai protocol. And if your subject is normal, he is classified as with a normal muscle quality, but if he's with a low uh, muscle power, uh, muscle mass ratio, so it's with a low muscle quality, and if it's again classified with a poor muscle quality, at this time we classify again poor muscle quality as a subject. Of course, we know that we have some limit, it's a proposal, so it should be considered as a work in progress. It's, it, it should be important to know that we are focusing on muscle and not on human. So this uh, proposal needs to be explored through epidemiologic survey. So I would like to thank again the Tax Force Committee, the ICSR Committee, Nutrition, and the co-author Sebastian Barbatigas, Yves Roland, and Mauro Zomboni for their collaboration of this review. Thank you very much for your attention.
Yeah, no, thank you, Dr. Larissi. We agree with you, in fact. Uh, we are actually uh, follow up uh, physical active uh, aging people during three years and observe they are beginning uh, dynapedic or sarcopenic or with uh, poor uh, muscle quality during this uh, three follow up, or if they have been before the, the screening, how the, the force functional capacity are decreasing regarding to this. And we are also taking care about the protein intake because, as we shown, we observe difference even if the RDA is higher than the recommendation from the USA. So that is uh, one of our pilot study. We are thinking that we will be able to make the international trial regarding to this combined or not with exercise because that is our field. And we also would like to figure out what is the important of the fat content in muscle or in body composition in general regarding to push engines and data too. Thank you. 